Yes, mate. That is a filth bag. Hey guys, it's Will from EDM Tips. Today I wanted to show you the 10 steps to making a bootleg remix. So firstly, what is a bootleg? Well, this is when you create an unofficial remix of something to either build your profile and release into the world, or if you're a DJ, it's a great way to stand out from your competition and have unique tracks that no one else has. Now, the biggest DJs in the world create bootlegs for their sets. That includes Eric Prids, that includes David Getter, and an English chap called James Hype, and that is the style I'm going to create one in today. So this is going to be a tech house bootleg of a 50 cent track and I'm going to show you where to find the vocals, how to match them to your track, how to build a complete track around that vocal and then a few tips on the legalities of creating a bootleg and how you can distribute it to have it work for you. If you want to learn how to create tech house in depth, I've just released my brand new start to finish tech house course which you can check out from the link below. And if you enjoyed this video, please smash like, share it with your friends and consider subscribing to my channel for electronic dance music production tutorials each and every week it really helps me if you do subscribe if you haven't already just click that little button below and the bell as well so this is the track we're going to be creating today if you don't want to know what this sounds like because i'm going to be doing this on the fly then skip ahead a few seconds spoiler alert. <laughs> Cool, so without further ado, let's hop into the door and get it done. Oh yes, if you do want this project file and all the samples completely free, apart from the vocal, because I can't distribute that, you can download it for free below this video. Okay, let's do it, boom. Okay guys, so I'm gonna do this in one take, no edits, because I want you to see my whole process. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, so let's just see, shall we? So step one is you need to pick an acapella on which you would like to base your bootleg. Now the best place I know for this is a website called acapellasforyou.co.uk and you can just search for any popular acapellas and it, you can usually find them. There are other ways to get acapellas, but that's the way that I suggest. Anyway, so I, I don't know if that's legal by the way, but that's what I'm doing. So I've selected 50 Cent in the club and that's what I'm gonna do a bootleg on in a kind of James Hype Tech House style. So the first thing I want to do is select a tempo, I'll select 125, and then we want to get the acapella into Ableton. And it doesn't matter if you don't use Ableton, you can do this in any door. So uh, let's create an audio track. Let's just drag in the acapella from wherever you've got it saved on your hard drive. And I'm gonna unwarp this because I've kind of brought it in before. And what happens is you'll drag it in and it's gonna have no warping whatsoever. And it's gonna look or sound something like this. It's gonna be completely out of time from the rest of your track. So if we turn the metronome on, let's hear it. Go, go, go. Go, yeah, nice one, go, 50. Sounds go, great, mate. Go, okay, so let's name this and then we're gonna warp it, get it in time, do everything around it. Sweet, so let's save this. What should we name this bad boy? 50 cent, let's name it Thrup Knee Bit. Nice. Why not, eh? Why not? And let's get this in time with the rest of the track. Go. So this is how you do it. First, you want to get or find the uh, tempo of the original track. Now the easiest way to do that is just look it up on Google, tempo 50 cent in the club and it should tell you. It told me when I looked this up that it's 90 BPM. So I need to double click on that, press warp. Uh, let's start again, choose cancel. Let's start again, yep. Yeah. And now we've set it to 90 BPM. Go, 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 go. So you can hear it some time now. Nice. And I've pitched it down because I don't want to get flagged up for copyright on this. So I've just pitched it down. And if you select Complex Pro as the warp, that's the best warp for vocals when you're doing a bootleg. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, I've got my magic list, is get the kick. And let's just pick any big fat kick. I'm going to select one from my Vengeance collection, but you can get one from any sample pack with a good kick. Uh, let's just drag that in. Now you could do a kick in audio, but I'm gonna use it in MIDI. Doesn't really matter which way you do it. And let's just draw in those beats. Go. Go, 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 shorty. It's your birthday. We gonna party like this. Now you can hear there's an issue because the vocal starts in the wrong place when he starts singing. So this is how you sort that out. You can drag this clip start here to get it start on the downbeat. So if we go to the first verse, it's your birthday. Go shorty. That's the downbeat, shorty. Cool, so that's how, that's how we do it. Uh, let's just loop those kicks. 
we're just going to work on this little loop here first. And now the next thing we need to do is get some kind of baseline on the go. Now you can look up what key that track is in as well, or you can do it by ear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a sampler and I'm going to use a bass sample. I'm going to go into the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit, which you can check out below. And I like that cool little bass sound. So this is the bass line we're going to use. That's the bass sound. Now it's important to make sure that your uh, any samples you use are tuned to the key of the track. So the way to do that is if you create a synth, uh, just a basic synth, that's going to be tuned always. So that's a C. And we need to make sure this bass line is tuned to a C as well. And they're slightly out of tune. So the way you can tune your sample is to select them both like this by holding command and then arming both tracks so they both play at the same time when you hit your MIDI keyboard. And then tuning your sample to make sure it's in tune with that synth. There we go, perfect. And actually you can see this because it says it's tuned to C sharp, but now it's tuned to C because uh, yeah, I've changed it. So I can delete that operator now and now this is in tune with the track. It's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give up. It's not your birthday. You'll find me in the so next thing to do is to pro either program in a bass line or just kind of tap one in on your keyboard. So I'm going to do that. And that one I just played was kind of cool. With Tech House, it doesn't have to do big jumps. You want it kind of quite close together anyway. So let's do that. It's your birthday. We gonna party like it's your birthday. We gonna sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give up. It's not your birthday. You'll find me in the so what I did then was just try and match it to the groove of the vocals. So when you're making a bootleg, you really want the vocals to be front and centre. Um, so everything you create around it has to complement that. And this is a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a naughty, cheeky little song, cheeky little fitty. So that's why we're doing a cheeky tech house vibe. So now let's quantize these. I'm going to select all of the notes open up quantize and just make sure it's all stuck to the grid and i'm going to listen through and just check all the notes are in the right place it's your birthday we gonna party like it's your birthday we gonna sip a party like it's your birthday and you know we don't give up it's not your birthday you'll find me in the that one's a bit wrong and i want to also make these notes a bit longer so they're all it's your birthday we gonna party like it's it's your birthday. We're gonna party like it's your birthday. We yep, so let's grab these, make them slightly longer as well. That looks pretty cool. And I'm going to select them all and hold command and just make sure that the velocity is equal for all of them. So let's tweak this bass sound a bit, get it really popping. What I'm gonna do to do that is just tweak the release a bit so it's a bit less sort of stop and start because at the moment it's this. So I'll put a bit of release. And I've got a really cool idea actually. Uh, if you're using a sample and you've got a, a fairly good sampler, you can select um, ping pong mode. And this is something I haven't shown you before. And what this will do will kind of reverse the sample if you extend this note longer. So check this out. So I'm just going to have this note have that kind of reversed suck back type sound. But I'll have to tweak down the release a bit. So now it's doing that on this note here. You can see it is kind of reversing that sample. So let's let's just use that on those bits because that sounds really cool actually I like that boom boom and let's tweak the loop point and now let's add a little bit of pitch oscillation at the beginning of these this note as well so let's turn on the pitch oscillator
Just going to tweak it a bit. And now you've got a really short, sharp pitch bend at the beginning, which gives it that slightly um, more percussive sound. This is off. A bit too soft. Cool. So let's stick a sidechain compressor on that. Now the way I do that is I've got a separate sidechain channel, which is a MIDI track. And you can see I've just programmed in a beat on each um, where the kick would be. But I use a rim shot, a very short, sharp instrument to trigger the sidechain compressors because then I get all of the control within the attack and release uh, controls on the compressor. If you trigger it from a kick, it kicks a longer sound anyway. Uh, so that means that it's going to duck for longer and we don't want that. Oh, I've just realized I put the drums on the wrong channel. The kick should be on that channel. Never mind, we'll sort that out in a minute. So yeah, let's throw on a normal compressor. And again, you can do this in any door or most compressors will have a sidechain input. Let's open that up, press sidechain, choose audio input from your sidechain channel. And in Ableton, you can see I've got the output set to sends only, so we never actually hear this sound. This is what the sound sounds like, like a little rim shot. But I set the output to sends only, so we never actually hear that. It's just used as a trigger for this sidechain compressor. And what that does is duck the kick, sorry, duck the bass to allow the kick to pop through. So if we turn off the kick, let's listen to the bass. That's how it was before. And that's how it is now. Cool, so we can also put one of these side chain, let's call it side chain pump. We can also copy and paste and put this on the vocal as well. So let's just color the vocal. And this is going to make the whole track pump a bit more. Okay, let's build the beats. I'm just going to swap these round because I uh, loaded the kick into the wrong uh, channel, but that's fine. No worries, mate. We're on the Thrupney bit here. We can do whatever the hell we like. If you're enjoying this so far, give me a hell yeah, brother, or an amen, brother, in the chat below, in the comments, because it lets me know that you're enjoying it. Let's get the beats on the go, cool. So next we need, magic list, tell me what we need. We need a drum uh, open hat, closed hat. So let's go to my drums in the EDM Tips Creative Toolkit. We'll go to closed hats, I think. That's pretty cool. It's all about selecting the right textures as well, guys. The right sounds that work well together. Uh, why do I call that snares? Let's call that drums. Program them in. Every other beat. Like so. Now let's choose a clap. I'm going to go to. Uh, let's just choose a random clap. Short and sharp for a tech house vibe. Cool. Drag that in. Every other beat. Every other kick, rather. Nice and short and sharp. Cool, now let's build out that drum a bit and we're going to work with the 16th to create some skips, some interest. So let's have a look at what we can find. First, let's go back to the Creative Toolkit. We will get a couple of claps. Cool, we'll use that one as a little skip. 
Cool, so you can see we're just working on the 16th there. Let's change the grid to 16th. And you can add these little skips at the end of bars, which just add some groove. And let's add another one as well to add some, add some extra interest. This might be a bit too much. That's cool. Cool, there we've got our skips in. Let's just copy those over. Now let's add a shuffle. So to do that, we just need a kind of hi-hat, a closed hi-hat on every 16th beat, and that's going to add the shuffle to get the groove going. And what we're going to do is program it in and then go through a couple of sounds, make sure we get the best one for the job. Let me know what kind of music you want me to cover on this channel, guys. I've had James Hype be requested a lot. Cool. But what we need to do, that was on every eighth. We actually need to make that twice as frequent. So we'll make it on every 16th. And then we're going to add a groove template to this, which is going to add some extra shuffle. Firstly though, I want that ducking a bit. I want that kind of grooving. So I'm going to, again, copy another sidechain compressor, just paste it after the hat, the closed hat we've just put on. So now we can hear that kind of grooving as well. I, I quite like that sound, that's absolutely fine. Now let's open up the groove pool. Uh, browse groove library and I always like to use Logic, for house music at least. I just go to Logic. 16 swing 60. You can hear it go instead of and that's going to add that housey swing. So let's turn the velocity to zero. Drag this onto our drums and it's important to drag this onto the bass as well so everything's kind of locked to the same groove. Um, and then I dial in the amount I want with this timing control here. That's pretty cool. So it's quite subtle, but it just adds that extra bit of shuffle and swing. Now let's add an open hat because when the groove really gets going, and don't worry, we're about to arrange this as well, um, but we want this to open up a bit. Yes, let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to, I don't know, let's just go to drum hits, open hat. Get something a bit grungy and see how that sounds. Program it in. In between every kick to add that house. I'm going to tweak the closed hat there. Cool. Okay. I'm just going to add a couple more bits of groove. Now it is painstaking, but it's, you have to get that, that groove right, you know? Uh, let's see. Let's use a shaker sound actually. Just gonna, again, put it on the 16th. Not every 16th, just. 
So just adding, building that groove, using those 16ths. Um, and there was another sound I really liked, but... Whatever, that's good enough for me. Cool, so just gonna save that. Thrupney bit, baby. And now we are gonna create some James Hype type big saw horn for, yeah, basically a hook that happens every now and again in the track. So let's go, let's, uh, let's just call this horn. It's not really gonna be a horn sound. It's more gonna be like a big saw synth sound. Why am I coloring it blue? Cyan is the natural color of synths. Come on, Will. Right, let's build up quite a nice rich sound using just the stock plugins. So first I'm going to use analog. Let's hear what that sounds like. Just a normal saw wave. So what I want to do is go to this part here and change the routing. So I've got a saw wave going through this chain and a saw wave going through this chain. And if this is a bit um, kind of advanced for you, do check out some of my courses that cover all of this stuff. Uh, yeah, there's a link below. Now I want that to be sustained, so I'm just going to turn the sustain up on both oscillators. I'm going to pan one left and one right, and this is going to make it really wide sounding. But we need to make it slightly different on each channel, otherwise you won't hear the panning. So I'll detune one, I'll detune the other. And I'm going to add some unison as well. Gives it that really cool, like 80s D tune saw sound. So we're just going to use this now and again, uh, and let's just take the release down to it stop straight away. I want to make this a bit fatter, actually, this sound. So what I'm going to do, I'll group it, I'll open up the chain. I'm going to create another chain and I'm going to put a an operator in there. It's just going to have a sine wave. And you can hear it adds that thickness in the low end. And what I want to do is do a little bit of pitch bending on this. And I want it to pitch bend down. You can hear the two synths pitch bend a different amount. I want it to pitch down one, two, three semitones. Uh, and I'll show you why in a sec. So if we go into analog, where can we change the pitch bend range here? Here we go, pitch bend range three. And then operator, pitch bend range would be, uh, da -da -da -da. it's set to five, so let's set that to three. And now they should pitch bend uh, the same as each other, those two synths. <laughs> So that's the kind of sound we want to go for. Uh, and I'm going to just take out some of the low end of that wide bass so we don't get phase cancellation issues. And I'm going to add one more synth. I'll duplicate the operator. And I'm going to change the shape of the wave. In fact, I'll just program it in on this oscillator thing. some more harmonics. But we don't want it fighting with our main bass line, so I'm just going to EQ the whole lot like this. And then let's program something in there. In fact, we'll save that for later actually when we do the arrangement. So next stage we want to make that baseline pop a bit more. So I'm going to duplicate it. And this is going to be an interesting tech house kind of um, texture. So let's call this high bass. It's not really going to be used as a baseline. And I'm going to 
grab everything, put them up an octave. And I just want to do a couple of um, bits that augment that rhythm. So I'm going to turn off the the reverse effect because it doesn't really work on this high one. Uh, so let's turn off loop. I need to turn it up though, it's a bit quiet. And I don't want this sidechain pumped actually, so I'll, I'll delete that. It's just going to be kind of like a top bit, augmenting that bass line to kind of bounce along a bit, so check it out. And I'll take out this one just to add some variation and this one. And let's make this a bit more interesting and wider. So what I'm going to do is throw a delay on there to create this slight harsh effect type sound. I'm also going to filter out the low end because as I said, we aren't really using this as a bass. So you can hear the delay, but what I want to do is have a very quick delay and just repeat once, and that's going to create a really wide effect. So if we turn this up to 100%, ping pong, that's important, turn the feedback down, and then these channels here, we need them both to be just a matter of milliseconds delayed from each other, the left and the right channel, and that's going to create the illusion of stereo width. Like so. So this is off center and this is on tested in mono and to test it in mono i've got a utility plugin on the uh, master channel with a shortcut to just press this mono button and i check in mono all the time to make sure stuff like that still sounds good in mono so now we've got this kind of wide effect with the top bass And it all together. Now the beauty of this is we can also automate these uh, effects here, the delay time and the feedback to create some weird effects. So check this out. which can be quite cool with everything going on. Yes, mate. But you can automate that to your taste, you know. Um, but let's crack on because time is running out. Okay, extra vocals. Let's first add some uh, reverb to the main vocals. So on this auxiliary channel, I've just got a reverb with a short decay time. A utility to bump up the volume and then an EQ to take out the low end. So let's just listen to the vocals. Just to add a bit more presence. Let's try. And that's with a bit of reverb. But I want more interest on those vocals. So on the second, uh, I think I'm going to create a secondary auxiliary channel and call this delay and we're going to put some delay on those vocals as well so uh, just put a delay on there 100% wet because it's on an auxiliary channel ping pong on feedback down and let's just have a listen feed it on a bit 
it's sugar, eh? Hey. We gon' party like it's sugar, eh? Hey. We gon' sip a cardi like it's sugar, eh? Hey. And you know we don't give up, it's not sugar. You gon' find me in the cardi, it's sugar, eh? Hey. We gon' party like it's sugar, eh? Hey. We gon' sip a cardi like it's sugar, eh? Hey. And you know we don't give up, it's not sugar. You gon' find me in the cardi, it's sugar, eh? Hey. We gon' party like it's sugar, eh? Hey. We gon' sip a cardi like it's sugar, eh? Hey. And you know we don't give up, it's not sugar. Cool, so let's build this track out. I'm gonna add some more effects as we go. Now let's arrange it. Now the way you could do this is you can check out the video that I've posted to there or there, wherever it is. It's gonna show you the easiest way to arrange a track by using a reference track. So if you do struggle getting out of the eight to 16 bar loop stage, then do check out that video. But I'm just gonna kind of do this quickly based on uh, the vocals that I have, because that can be quite useful to uh, that, that's the kind of nice thing about the acapella as well. It already tells you what the structure should more or less be. So what I'm going to do, go, 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 that's the first verse. So what I'm going to do is just record these go, go bits to be, or repeat them rather. So the intro could be something like this. I'm just going to build this as I go. Let's just duplicate those drums, consolidate and duplicate them. Kick as well. And make sure the side chain trigger is extended as well for the whole length of the track. This is a really quick arrangement. I'm gonna create a build, some effects and add in some interesting vocal uh, stuff as well. I'm kind of getting carried away here. Then I'm gonna tell you what you can do to distribute your bootleg as well. So do stick with me, hit like if you're enjoying this and subscribe if you haven't already. And what I'm gonna do is filter out the kick. To start off, and I'm gonna take out some of these drums. Because we don't want them all coming in at once. Let's double that up actually. I'm gonna extend that first bit. And remember, if you're doing a bootleg, it's usually gonna be used in a club, in that club, if you will. So uh, yeah, make sure you've got the good beats for an intro. So you can either include it in your DJ sets or uh, another DJ can. So let's just kind of get this going. Go, go, go. A build up here. Right, with this bass, oh, I'm getting excited now because it's it's about to be a tune. Right, okay, we've got our bass. What I'm gonna do is group it together and I'm gonna take out the low ends to kick things off when we introduce the bass. So we're gonna go EQ8 on there. Yeah, there we go. That's that's sweet. And we'll have a big riser. Whoops. Taxi. Then you need to take out that you, you need to get that low end back in the kick obvs. Let's try it again. And I might take out the side chain pump for the vocal just at that last part. I'm gonna have a sex, I ain't gonna make it low, so come give me a hug if you're in the getting rough. You can find me in the club. I don't pull a book, my mind got what you need, you can fill a book. I'm gonna have a sex, I ain't gonna make it low, so come give me a But we don't want to use those claps yet. Well, at least one clap. Now, you don't need to use the whole track in a bootleg as well. You know, you can just use the bits that you like. So let's build uh, this track as we go. I'm going to add a, a custom riser as well. I'm showing you loads of stuff today, guys. Loads of stuff. Um, let's do a custom riser and then we're going to add some like little vocal chops as well 
to give it that more of a James hype feel vibes and let's what should we do this in let's do it in an operator as well it doesn't have to be fancy now this track is in probably the key of C minor because the bass line I, I made predominantly on C it's obviously a minor track so let's get this riser and we need to first make the pitch bend range up to 24 so so we can really kind of make it rise I'm going to change the wave yeah that's pretty cool and I'm going to add a reverb to the channel to really fade that back in the mix 100% wet and add an EQ afterwards so we don't have too much low end and let's just kind of build this riser in here rising baby and this is going to be leading into our first drop let's start from nice and low that's a cool that's just a cool bass sound fact okay now let's um program in the pitch bend so Envelopes, MIDI control, pitch bend, and take it right down. And I, I put a node in at the very beginning because sometimes um, if you stop the track like here and it's got a pitch bend applied and you don't have a node to reset it, Ableton sometimes doesn't reset it. So that's why I do it like that. That's a bit too low, so let's make that higher. I'm just going to grab that, put it up an octave. Maybe two octaves. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the vocal. It's really easy once it's all in time and just have this first bit. So in the club is kind of on the drop. That's like the main hook of the track. So here we go. I might have a auto pan on this as well. Auto pan. Yes, mate. That's a film bag. Here we go. So you could just have that. Just a little interlude. Cool. Okay, so that's kind of how you do the arrangement, and you can, you know you can break it down with the beats here for. A... And in terms of the kick, you might really filter this down, so the opposite of what we've just done there. Let's put an auto filter on, and just for this little break bit, we are going to take it down like so. And I'm just kind of jamming here, guys. I had no idea what this was going to turn out like. Cool, okay, so I know I'm just kind of riffing a bit. I will just do a couple of vocal chops. I heard something in there I quite liked, and I'm just going to take it out to use it elsewhere. Yeah, that, yeah, I'll have that. Yeah, Fiddy. Let's have it. 
Let's just have that little bit. It's kind of mixed with some other vocals, which is a bit annoying, but um, I'm just going to put this on a completely new track and create an interesting vocal effect. Go, 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 go. Because it can be useful even if you don't have the vocals playing. It just adds texture to the rhythm even. And we can make this sit in its own space as well, which is quite cool. So if we put, uh, well, we'll take out the low end like so. So it's just a yeah. And again, we can add a little delay on there really quick to make it just in its own space. Ping pong, feedback. Make sure it works in mono. Yeah. And then we're going to kind of build that little vocal thing into the track. Now I'm going to use one more little vocal trick that I haven't shown you before. So let's do that. I might have done it. I'm not sure. You could even take the vocals out on this bit. Like, yes, yes, absolute filth bags. So you could just have that on the drop. Take those vocals out. Oh, yes, this makes me want to DJ again. Anyway, I digress. Uh, I won't do another vocal trick, actually. That's enough. All I was going to do was take girl and... Uh, Let's say, let's see, let's get a making sex noises, brah. Because I like to, if you're doing a bootleg, if you can do stuff relating to the, the lyrics as well, that's kind of a nice added touch. This bit. I'm into having sex, I ain't into making love. You're a bad man, Biddy. So, let's go samples. I'm just going to use one of my samples that I recorded years ago. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's my Wells vocal hooks? Not Charlotte's. Not today, Charlotte. Today we're going to use Catherine. Yeah. Okay. So, and this little drop here, when he starts banging on about what he likes in the bedroom, unnecessary fitting. So there we could just have like a little uh, interlude really quickly and it's just like a hint at what he's rapping about and again we could have some kind of weird echo on that to have it stand out so let's just go and then i'm going to show you how to distribute this and not get in trouble so let's just choose ping pong and we're going to have this kind of bounce uh, notes. I want it kind of doing it quite quickly. One, two, three, four. Yeah, something like that. That's it. That's it. That's it, guys, because the builders started banging away. Maybe because it's this tune. Here we go. I'm just jamming. More effects, more effects. This is a tune. Okay, I'm going to stop anyway. All right, so what do you do when you've created an absolute badass banger like this? What do you do, I hear you ask? Well, what you don't do is try and release it on Spotify because uh, you'll be breaking the law. And technically, and I'm not a lawyer, so take this with a grain of salt. If you want to build your profile, uh, bootleg's a good way to do it because people already know the track and they'll be able to relate to it quicker. So you can, if you upload it to somewhere like YouTube, technically, yes, you're still breaking the law, but 
any monetization will go directly to the rights holders. Um, so that is one thing I would suggest. And it's a great way to build a buzz around your name if you're distributed to DJs as well. The chances are you're not going to get a knock on the door from the heavy boys demanding money. And if it does blow up big as a bootleg, what can happen is what and what's happened to me before is that the label that owns the rights might contact you and say, hey, look, let's work something out and do an official release of this because it's really getting some traction. So, um, yeah, it's good as a way to build buzz. Don't try and make money from a bootleg and be careful. Take what I'm telling you with a grain of salt, because technically you're using someone else's recording, someone else's track. And if you're using that in your own track and it's very recognizable, technically you are breaking the law. But yeah, that's it, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget, you can download this project, all of the project files below this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. And until next time, oh yeah, check out my Tech House course, brand new below this video. Till next time, cheers and happy producing.